ni de canviar-ho al català de tant en tant per veure que el que explico més o menys ho entenem, sinó per vosaltres sinó per vosaltres. Si teniu qualsevol dubte, m'ho pregunteu al principal, jo faré ja la resposta en català o en castellà o en el que no m'agrada, després no, per altres persones que hi ha aquí. Ara, ja està. Ara, ja està. Ara, ja està.
have of these pluralities, but it's sending you know, what we, what we have a small uh, wall of this place to do this. So in this case, we see that it emerges also, but in Spain it's, uh, it's, it's closed, and the movement is done with this match. Okay? We need some markers, also in the, in the glasses, we don't see here in the sector, but we can do the movement using this one. Okay? So this is a kind of Reality. But also we have augmented virtuality. It's the same, but we put something from the real inside the virtual world. For example, a display, uh, seeing a webcam or something like that. Okay. Okay. Sure. And then we have augmented reality. We showed it yesterday how it works. But this is an example of augmented reality. Someone yesterday said, can I go to the, to the museum? And with the mobile, I can listen to something. This is from 1957, from the other life. Okay. I, sh I saw this one, and I was a child. So I was with my parents, they go to the museum, and I was there, and she's drawn 54. Picasso drawn her, okay? When I was a child, I was in the middle of the, the room, in a sofa, just waiting my, my parents with the other life. So at this point, I don't know that the name of Omega Rise, I don't know that Omega is reality, but, okay. but then I go to home and I see another thing. Okay. I hope some of you have seen what I was, what I showed you. So at this point, when I was a child, I thought I'm going to write it, it's cool. So I want something like this. <coughs> As we heard, I did it with me, but in Catalan, because, you know, the word real can be a lot instantaneous. Okay? So I want to shoot a new one out. So when I thought about when I could it, I was thinking about something like that. <coughs> but what happens? I go to the university, I study computer aim, and the first time I know the, the word for meteorology, what I show, what I see, is something like that. <laughs> so, in my mind, it doesn't come for a lot, a lot. It comes something like that. And it's not so cool for me. I mean, it's also meteorology. But to see ghosts, I can see ghosts without the ghosts. But now, we have something like this. It's more close. This kind of mental reality is called the <coughs> group. Okay, I see what the mental reality, uh, mental reality uh, showed show me what I was uh, uh, seeing. Okay, there are other kind of mental reality that is called monitor Okay, and we are better familiar. 
also omega gravity because we are filming something that we are commenting but we are seeing quite a difference it's real time only. in this case in this case it's not real time but this is the base of omega gravity we have real time omega gravity because we do this before we do this uh, five years ago it doesn't matter ten years ago with a supercomputer now no we can do it something similar to this but the basis are the same. Comes from here. So <coughs> I could use some examples of uh, this one as a reference to show you uh, Omega Rise. Okay. <coughs> we also have Omega Rise in uh, the real world, in the TV. Sometimes we, sh not sometimes every day, it leaves me because I go to motorbike, so I need to know the weather. I see the weather in the TV. And I have a person who is showing something that is not. So in this case, it's using a metal reality in a football match. not only in Brazil, it's done here, in Spain, in Hebrew Cruz Liver. Okay, if we might you saw the match between uh, Atletico Madrid and Barca in the TV, I don't know if you feel something strange, but I feel it. Uh, if you see here these banners, they are static banners. Okay, with Hebrew Cruz, Madrid and Barca. This promotion is this advertisement is for Barca. Sponsors, okay, but what happened? 
of problems here with the segmentation because they can they uh, see that the bank, the, the size of the cloud flows and changing. But the players go uh, occlusion, occlusion to the to the bank. So they have some difficulties. This is why I they saw them. But but it's one in real time. I think not for application for the mobile. Okay, so the, the field of the real
sometimes when we are talking about augmented reality, it doesn't mean to put a lot of things. Maybe, well, sometimes that is more kind of so exists the initial reality. The idea is very interesting. We can, we can remove something that we don't uh, want to disturb the user. Okay? And in me, use this uh, emission strategy to do this. Okay? For the space. see how it works and the idea is to uh, glue it that people is not talking just to focus our attention okay uh, they are using Kinect you will see but they use three Kinects but the, the advantage of Kinect also is have the micro microphone and uh, have a, a 3D audio so we can determine where is the people who is talking and to uh, explode this strategy
skeletons will be later what, what means the skeletons are just smart. <coughs> But this is an example that uh, we can to, to change the mind that Omega Rite is not what would be more information. Maybe it's to do someone and add something. That's not what a lot of things in the, in the computer is doing. So which are the ingredients for the success of Omega Rite? I would like to review that series and tell me why do you, why or why not do you like this Omega Rite? change depending on the distance of the other marker. Do you like it? This is done using a uh, higher toolkit that we found <coughs> yesterday. Can you know that out? Yeah. Uh, flickering on the moving on the teapot. The, the marks. We, said we, uh, were, we were talking about the graphic, the vision, computer vision, but also the computer graphics. Here, do you think this is in the real world? No. There are something that is strange to us. Not in the <coughs> same. We will see later. So we have to take into account different things. Okay? The first is the stability. That, uh, when we put a model in the uh, real world, we have to change the positions. Different from the camera, okay? The second thing is how we uh, put the rendering, the graphics, the virtual world in the real world. <coughs> in the case we have this image, we want to put this uh, avatar. That's what happens here. We are putting in front of the table, but the feet are behind it. So they are not we don't like that. Our brain, our eyes, that doesn't like it. What happens if we put use some occlusions correctly? Do you feel uh, great with this? Do you like it? In this case, it's not real. The shading maybe would be okay. The colors, I mean, uh, but without shadows, we don't feel that it's real. So we need the geometry and also the shape, the shape. Okay. So we have to put uh, some effort in the environmental analysis to know where is the thing in real world to put the virtual world and, uh, and do some realistic augmentation. Okay. Let's see first the environmental analysis. We need to track in real time, if we want to do something in real time, the user viewpoint <coughs> with uh, reference to the virtual world. What is the virtual camera in the, in the real world, okay? We can use some sensors that we have in the phone, an iPhone or something like that. The geolocalization, we can know this. we are in this room. We can use the electromagnetic uh, sensors just to know is the, the position of the mobile. Acoustic, we can use the microphone, for example, in the hotel space to know who is talking. Uh, we can use the initials, but sometimes we, it's not uh, enough to, to have only the possibilities of the mobile sensors. So sometimes we need to add the vision-based uh, algorithm. Okay. Maybe active or passive. So we will see that uh, active is uh, something like Kinect, you know, and passive is just a, a camera. Let's see most. To do the tracking, we need to know things or, or where, are, where we are inside out in this example we have the iPad and we are looking through the iPad <coughs> so the camera is not uh, following me it's following the real world okay and the other is outside in I am in front of the camera okay. it begins so years ago I uh, remember <coughs> to play with uh, a toy yeah, the, the PlayStation 
This is an example of the example of OpenCV. <coughs> this is another example of using color tracking to do some interaction uh, with the virtual world. In this case, in the report, the case before was a painting, it's a 2D, and now it's something like 3D. So we do augmented reality using just the color tracking. we have more information about the, the image we have looking so we can uh, try to follow when uh, the text that we have if you see that the image is so dark so it's easy to detect where it's moving and uh, we, we try to show here we compute the, the average of the pixels in this case is on black we can compute the centroid and the maximum of minimum locals of the, of the shape and <coughs> it's easier to track like the, the movement of the, of the pixels okay. and using this technology this strategy we can do some interfaces that is so good like to uh, enter a pin code
using OpenCV or computer vision is optical flow. And it's useful because we can detect which pixels between two images changes. If we have a lot of coherency, what I mean, if I record it, this uh, graphic jam or this, uh, this row, the pixels doesn't change so much between two frames. Okay? If, I am, if I am in the cinema with the camera and do a strong movement, the coherence <coughs> will appear. It's not coherence between uh, pixels. But we have something like this. We can detect which pixels change, <coughs> and this is the direction of the pixels. <coughs> okay? So we will see in the image something like this, in green or yellow, so the pixel that changes the value, and then here in the, the right, the direction of these pixels. So when between two frames, two pixels, one pixel change, we search in the next uh, frame, where is the color, the same color as before in the new image. So we can detect some, uh, some directions of the pixels. This video showing uh, two types of optical flow. Okay. The advantage of these techniques that we are see, uh, seeing now is they are cheaper because it's doing in a, a 2D image. Okay, so we can do it in a computer, in a mobile. We don't need a lot of uh, technology or. And we, what we can do with this, <coughs> for example, we can mark some pixels that we want to follow and try to, uh, to follow some paths of, of interest. Okay? So in this case, these two guys want to follow the, the, the face. Again, we have a lot of coherency between frames. If we change a lot the image, we can follow the face. But with a small movement, this is the okay. case. And this is another uh, utility to uh, optical flow.
Okay. I told you, you put a mic, then you go back. Okay. You don't know how to hear. Maybe Amazon do the, the shipping with this. I don't know. As we said before, uh, all of this comes uh, from the uh, visual effects yes, in the, in the cinema. And optical flow is also used in the cinema. In this case, is to put the camera or the, the corresponding between the real camera and the virtual camera. <coughs> optical flow and we see it's cheaper than other strategies. I don't know if you see this video, it's uh, maybe <coughs> four years ago, three years ago. There's a guy that does experiments with a wheel, with a wheel remote, and do something that's very, very interesting.
we saw it before in the virtual reality. In the case, they use the same use some sensor. But this is the, the first time that do this in a cheaper way, just with a real remote. Okay. So keeping in mind this this idea to uh, have the head tracking and use it for show the virtual reality. Uh, using Optin CV also, we can do face tracking. Just looking at the image, we can track and detect what is the, the face. say that was a real face. Okay? If you do a draw, it's also a face. But uh, we can see here, we can track it. Sometimes it's not good because uh, the, the plate is not affected. <coughs> but here we can combine this with optical flow. We saw before that uh, the use guys uh, mark the, the face and then they follow the pictures. We can do this automatically. When we detect the face, we say this region it's my region of interest. And then track these pixels using also optical flow. So in the case that the face resolution uh, doesn't see anything, we can store the previous ones and use optical flow to have more stability. Okay, so we can combine different techniques to augment the, the stability of our application. Okay? So if we can have face tracking with the camera, we can do the same as before with the head tracking, but just <coughs> with the face. We use the computer, we use here the webcam, so we can detect where is our face. And where is the inclination we are looking over the display. change our uh, camera position, virtual camera position, depending we are looking. We will show later different spaces that use this, this strategy. <coughs> and this is um, the same, but using uh, a cell processor, and a really a real ray tracing, real time uh, rendering. example, uh, they use two cameras to detect also the proximity, so they go closer to the display, they move the, the camera also, and zoom in, uh, zoom out or zoom in depending on the distance. So do something more than one, just one camera, okay? <coughs> this is uh, face tracking, use it in mobile device.
to do some uh, to enrich a uh, user interface uh, just using the camera. The I don't know if you saw this in the, in the search and the social networks in the past days or weeks. This is a face substitution. Okay. We can detect the face, so we can change the face of the people. for chat roulette, you know chat roulette? <laughs> <laughs> Someone do a fluid for this? Why I say chat roulette? Because this is for a web browser. Okay, so it's a, we'll try to do it in now. We can execute this code in real time. have the webcam. That's me. I didn't see so maybe I have to change the position. And we can start. Can you just tell me if I am recognized it there? I didn't see. More or less that's this the face. Yeah. Okay, so I have moved a little more the more it changes. So we try with say my name. No. It changes. Just <laughs> <laughs> yeah. say my name. And we can change it. So it is in real time and it's in the in the person in the navigator. It's we need to use the Chrome, okay? It doesn't work with others. But it, it's fine. The disadvantage is this. When I try to look there, <coughs> the, the the face doesn't uh, rotate so much. Okay? So they have some <coughs> components. Same idea, but a bit more complex and uh, thinking a bit more. Uh, web page, places.com, to this, this application.
said that uh, they use this, this for type of applications to, to buy their assets. So I don't know if it was the one, but in this case they are using also the camera. They use the, also the, the camera, but they have an avatar of the face and they map it on the avatar. The they detect the camera, uh, the face, maybe using something like a web page, yes, uh, using an OpenCV to detect it and map it to the avatar. So they can do the, the, uh, the shadows and move the glasses on the nose. But they are using an avatar, a standard avatar. No, they are not our uh, avatar. In case of the nose is not our, maybe it's Thinner, lower, lower. So we see that the computer vision is good for locational features, so we can detect points, <coughs> regions, to follow them, texture, and maybe we can identify that this is a hand or this is a face. We can uh, show the image what is there. But uh, sometimes this is not enough. We have to uh, reconstruct the environment. Not only know if it's a hat or it's a face, also where is, and where is the table, where is other things. So we will use image-based 3D reconstruction. <coughs> what we say? They say what is where. <coughs> okay, we have something here that is flatter. We have a lot of people here, all the stuff in our room. Okay, TV, and we can use this geometry to augment <coughs> the context and put some, some more information using the techniques we have uh, before, okay? The first technique to reconstruct is using a hypothesis, okay? We can assume that all in the the world is five west, uh, it's, it's flat, okay? <coughs> it is not true, okay? This is not flat, but we can simplificate and, we, and think that, that uh, all the things are flat. And know what we're doing, okay? We're looking something like this, a book open, okay? I know that they have the ship, and this is the view in the, the top view, okay? Using, for example, uh, 3D registration in the cross point, we can try to, to search in the image something that is uh, following this uh, image or shape, okay? And it appears some uh, some uh, toolkits or SDKs that use this uh, idea, this assuming, this hypothesis, to follow or to track some markets. This is the case of a uh, toolkit that yesterday was a list of uh, Okay. Once we detect the, the market, we can uh, say that in this region, this is planar, we have a, a surface, and then our animation, on our models can do movement, movement, for example, okay? If we change the position of the marker, we will change the position of the light. of the application that is like how it works. In this case, it's the same concept, it's similar to the avatar we saw in the beginning, but they don't use one the marker, they use a lot of markets to uh, show the, the path. You can see here that the markers sometimes are not uh, detected good and they change the position okay, because they are using just uh, the position of the market in real time. They don't use the history of the market. Okay. 
charismatic. So then you use uh, optical pole, for example, to do more homogeneous uh, movements. Okay. And also they use uh, this paper as just not the same as the feet inside of the for the user to move a group better. How are books? They are books. We have an uh, image obtained from the camera. Then we search the markets. When we found some, some market, then we try to find the orientation and position of this market in the, in the real world. This is used to uh, put the coordinates of the virtual world. And identify what is the camera. Then we identify which markets of these are interesting for us. And finally, we translate this mark with an object, for example. We, post, uh, we can <coughs> blast the object and put an, do the animation as we want, and then render together with the, uh, with the real image. Okay, this is the process. The advantage of our toolkit is uh, they are fast and cheap to detect some uh, markers, but also it's easy to calibrate. We need just to put these two images, for example, and the algorithm is, uh, can calibrate the <coughs> duration of the camera and its and the position. Okay. And the, the inconvenience is that the virtual objects will only appear if the market is completely digital. If part of the market is outside the camera, we will not detect it. We put, put, put the hand in front of the market, we don't detect it, uh, the, the marker and the position. So we will take this flicking and if the object, virtual object disappears and appears. We can use optical flow to try to avoid this, but it's also complicated. Okay. Uh, very short explanation of how it works to say to, to find the markers. They have the image, then they the eyes, and then the, the telescope used can be manually and be automatically. Okay. Then with this image in black and white, we can detect the component levels. And then for each of the components, we can try to detect the bonding box. So the bonding box of these objects. Okay. And then with this bonding box, we try to look inside these pixels, which is the image, and try to detect the markers. Okay. In this case, we are looking for this marker, we detect it, and we, uh, we use it in the, in the pipeline. How I can know if this is a marker or not inside the bonding box? Okay. They have some uh, wrapping, the formation of the image that we have, just to put it as much uh, orthogonal. And then we compare all the positions of the images. We have an image that is a real image, and do some rotations, just to be independent of the rotation of the camera position. I compare this image taken from here from the patterns. So this is the pattern that we have. Uh, Finally, we take the maximum probability between the comparisons. Okay? Sometimes the, all the comparisons are lower than the fiscal, and we, we say that there is no mark. But we have a correlation between, in this case, 86%, that's fine, and we say this is the mark, 85%. Okay? Uh, as we say, that the problem, the drawback, is that we really need all the market digital. There are other techniques, for example, this, that detect some features from the back, not the whole back.
saw yesterday the, the examples of the of the the journals with the they are using the same they use uh, whatever image they take the features the the problem here is which feature is are interesting <coughs> there are a lot of bibliography to say they take the the edges of the images take there are a lot of uh, estimations and I don't know exactly the, the word now to, to try to know which is the important features to track. Okay? But the idea here is we don't need the whole image to know that we are moving this. If we have enough features detected and the, the, uh, the constraint between them are the same as in the original, we can extrapolate and know that we are looking into this image. Okay? This is more consistent. I do a break, okay? <laughs> and I will talk about the centers. Uh, we will see later why I do this. But when we are trying to use the, the, the sensors, please, as before, don't do, uh, don't use only the current value of the sensor. Try to use the previous ones to obtain a stability. You can see here, use the value of the sensor, and here using some, uh, some filters to try to do more uh, smooth, okay? It's the same as optical flow. Try to use the previous one to have a uh, signal with more smooth. <coughs> Why you say this one? Because in this, uh, in this work, they use the orientation of the, uh, of the mobile, right, the thermometer, to know the position of the camera and to know where I, I'm looking the marker <coughs> of the image and use this uh, information, the position of the gravity, to uh, track the point of interest. This is better to obtain uh, stability also, okay? You see here, this is the typical flow, the movements of the feature, and we saw that they are uh, al always consistent in the same direction. And here, the, the, sp the, the spot, I don't remember the name of this, uh, it's very similar, it's symmetric. So we don't know where is the top and the down of the, of the, the, end, the spot. So if you want to put always correctly the frame, we need to know where is the, the position of the mobile. Okay? And here it's the same uh, idea, but they use the, the gravity of the mobile to draw correctly the image. We assume that all the image that we are tracking is in this plane, in the horizontal plane. And depending on the camera, we can do an unwrap from this image, obtain this one. This is more orthogonal. So it's better to compare this image from the original one. And it's more stable to track the, the marker. Here we will see that the, the tracking is more stable. Okay, they can move the camera, and just here we see that the image is very planar. The wrapping performs that the, the frame, the descriptor frame or tracing, is better. I said before, this is used in the, in the, in the film, in the visual effects, okay? They don't use the markers in the, when I say the, the chroma, you remember the, the green uh, room, but sometimes we do the, this movement or this uh, recording in the screen, we don't have the chroma. So we can track different features from 
the real thing and map it to the virtual world and then put some stuff uh, virtual. Okay? So this is this technique comes from this, uh, this idea. So track the camera from the real world to the virtual world. There are a lot of uh, software, uh, for example Blender, that can do uh, camera tracking. <coughs> and now another idea to obtain the reality and to know very the things is the depth cameras. It appears and gives us more information than a color, just an MB color, red, green, and blue. We also have for each pixel the depth, the depth value of this pixel. So we can reconstruct more or less with a lot of noisy the, the, the geometry of the middle world. Okay? So one of the best cameras that appeared was the, the Telecam okay? in uh, 2008, 7 and give some uh, examples of uh, play or games. And uh, this is the, the commercial video. Okay. As you can see, it's not Google. The video is uh, not enough. That was the idea of the, the first uh, depth cameras. So we can use that to find the, the depth to segment what is background, what is foreground. In this example, the guy goes behind them, just uh, appears when the, the hand is close to, to him. So we can segment also uh, the information. But uh, I think this is most commonly for you. This is inside of Kinect. Okay. Uh, they use a, a camera, a GB camera, and also have the infrared. Uh, here is the projection of the infrared, and this is the camera with infrared, and can compute also there. Okay. This is not new. This is uh, support you see a lot of, uh, or you play a lot of games with uh, the Kinect. Okay. But in uh, this workshop, it's not uh, just fun. What we can do with Kinect, this is the inside of Kinect. We can have the, uh, <coughs> the depth values, and using these depth values, also Kinect uh, SD card provides us a skeleton. We can detect the skeleton of the people, and say where is the neck, where is the arm, and the legs, okay? and when we can use this information to track the people, and also for reconstruction. <coughs> You can see that we have a skeleton. Sometimes the skeleton is not okay, it changes the position. But we are not working in a skeleton, we are in a metal reality. So sometimes it's enough to recognize this, a, this is a person, okay? and we have here the arm. So it's here, or more or less between here is the arm. I know just here, this region, maybe it's a hand. I focus 
all my power computation in that zone, not on the rest of the image. And can do some recognition of the of the patient of the can movement. Okay? Here it's to use the Kinect, to use the, the skeleton, but we see that they have values, it's not stable, they are a lot of noisy, <coughs> the noise, but we can then focus on a region and use that the color image to segment using OpenCV or other stuff, uh, or uh, picture tracking, and do a specific effort in just this part of the image. Okay, it's focus on what you want. And this is another example of how to use the Kinect to do some uh, user interface. Okay? In this case, it's, a, it's for medical purpose. You can see inside here the uh, column and the bones play on its way. But using the Kinect, can move with the slide. and look inside him. You can see here the image obtained from the depth value. We can see some holes. This is the color image. And this is the reconstruction that we do of the midomy. Okay? And this is using some shading. We can see that from here we can uh, reconstruct all the display in real time, but if you use the information of the previous one, we can do it. We can increase or a description of the environment.
I will stop the video just to be sure that you are uh, you understand better how it works. Okay? Uh, do you know uh, volume rendering? Well, we can uh, we can have two types of geometry, of virtual geometry. We have the meshes. Yeah, we have the uh, doesn't matter this is or black or something like that. We use some uh, bases to describe the geometry. Okay. Do you, do you see it? You can some, write something here? Okay. We have bases. This is like okay, <laughs> <laughs> This is more or less a cube. Okay. We uh, we store only the faces of the geometry and we render it. But sometimes we don't need, uh, we don't want this. We don't want to discretize all the room. So when we have, is to create a volume, and inside the volume we create two uh, cubes. <coughs> yes. So inside each of these cubes. I can store some information. Okay. So in this case, with the camera, when I move in the camera, I know the, the, the depth value. If the camera is here, <coughs> this is the image, I know that in this pixel, I have a profile, uh, depth of five. And it would be in a virtual environment, this distance. Okay. So I put here, and I feel it, there is something. And I do the same for all the pixels. There is something, there is something. So, I can store uh, the, all the volume from this room and uh, filling or empty with that and updating the values that there is something here or not. And can reconstruct all the displacement of the, the chairs and the tables. Okay? This, this is using this idea. Not have the representing of this type of geometry, they use this type of geometry. Okay? I can extract this one is type of geometry and then rendering. But the, the, the kernel is using the base, the base of the algorithm of the file utilization. The kernel uses this type of geometry and then to render, extract from there, and use the, the, the typical game uh, rendering chip. Okay? This is a scalable, so I can do we can do something like that. To demonstrate large scale, high detail volumetric surface reconstruction. Using a Kinect camera, users can freely move around the physical space and continuously scale the world around them. Noisy depth maps from the depth sensor are incrementally fused into the volumetric representation, which rapidly yields detailed surface geometry. In this example, the user walks into a three-story bookstore and scans it in under six minutes. video is to know that we can represent a large, large uh, buildings. So for heritage, it's very useful to see the outside of the building and reconstruct it. Okay? Uh, it's clear. That's a test, that's a page. It's here, because we can put some 
In this case, sorry, this is not with Kinex, it's using a webcam. Okay? They use the gloves with some colors, detect the image where the colors, and then uh, do the represent what is the pose of the hands. Okay? The finger. In this case, we use two cameras. Okay, this is an idea. The gloves are a t shirt. Maybe you don't know what the street is. Maybe inside the gym. In this case, they were constructing the skeleton using two cameras. And the information of the colors of the t shirt. So this is the same idea, the same outdoors, but now uh, removing gloves, okay, two cameras without gloves. We propose a markerless hand tracking system for 3D computer aid design that is tailored specifically for the assembly of mechanical parts. <coughs> Using two commodity webcams, our system tracks the position and orientation of both hands. We can also track a pinching pose and a pointing here that it's more accurate but we are focusing that we are in augmented reality so we don't need maybe we don't need this precision okay what's this someone knows Project that needs, I thought, uh, $1,000. Yes. No, $100,000. And they obtain it $1,500,000. Okay. So,
Intel is also working on this, and then my we integrate it. We have these cameras, the depth cameras, and we have put in the laptop, but in the top, in the top of the laptop. And now we need them uh, to doing the same and putting very directly in the in the laptop. So we will change our camera of the laptop to a depth camera. So uh, as a conclusion for the. The, the cameras, with that cameras, we can <coughs> solve where the, the thing, but we don't know what it is. I know this is a surface or a collider, but I don't know what it is. We need also the computer vision to interact and to take to a segment and detect which of the We have to combine all these projects. And uh, this is a, maybe an outside, okay? But it's also for <coughs> localization and know where we are. But in this case, they <coughs> use uh, supercomputer or servers to obtain the, the information. Drawback of this is we need a server that couples the information and do the, the corresponding track tracing. <coughs> tracing uh, tracking. Okay. But if we uh, don't have this uh, server, but we have a museum or something of heritage, we can provide this and do for a, a beauty. This is not so much cost. Okay. But if you want to do an application for all the world, it's uh, complicated to use this. Yes. Aquí hemos llegado 
lo que sería uh, real life to uh, the, describe how to analyze the environment and the second part of the talk will be to how to uh, have a realistic augmentation. Okay? So we do a break, uh, 20, 30 minutes, and uh, the Gracias.